Hi, Jim Wagner here, your self-defense instructor. And behind me is the Sentry Made Body Opponent Bag, the acronym BOB. In fact, that's what we actually call him, Bob. Bob replaces the traditional martial arts punching bag or the Western boxing punching bag, which is nothing more than a cylinder with material in it, and you punch it. The problem is, you have to imagine quite a bit the human form. Well, he leaves nothing to the imagination because he's anatomically correct. He has eyes, he has ears, he has nose, he has lips. And of course, for self-defense, this is vital when I'm using full contact techniques that I couldn't otherwise do on a partner. Now, at the moment, I feel a little nervous. Why? Because I don't like having my back to the enemy. Never have your back to the enemy. Now, that brings up our first key point, and that is, Treat him like a real enemy, so I'm going to face the way I should be. Alright, I'm whacking away here at Bob. However, unless you're in sport martial art, you shouldn't be doing it like this. Why? Because reality-based personal protection is self-defense. And we don't want to be like a boxer or someone in MMA because self-preservation out in the streets or the battlefield is our main concern. Now, first of all, unless you're fighting someone completely naked, well, we got to dress Bob up. So let me show you what I do at my school. Now, the first thing you want to do is put on some sort of shirt for your Bob. And of course, practically every school does that. And usually, a sweater or a long sleeve shirt is good. Why? He doesn't have any arms. So you want an illusion that there's some sort of arms. And so, in this case, I have a generic uh, black sweater. But of course, it could be anything. A jacket, a t-shirt, uh, it could be a, a biker's t-shirt, it could be a, a punk rocker's t-shirt, whatever you want. It depends on what kind of enemy do you want. So, let's put the sweatshirt on him to start with. Alright, so now I'm putting a jacket on Bob here. And uh, criminals fight in winter. You may have to protect yourself in winter. So would he have a jacket on your enemy? Of course. Now keep in mind, whenever you put on any type of product, any type of clothes, you're going to have certain dangers. That's right. There's a zipper on this. In fact, here's the zipper. And when I zip this up, uh, I may end up cutting my hands when I start punching it. That's right. We don't wear protection on our hands in reality-based personal protection, especially going up against this bob. Now, why is that? Well, in real life, if I'm at a bar or if I'm in a civilian situation walking down the street and, uh, you know, it's not cold enough to have gloves on, I probably won't have them on. And so when I fight, there is a chance to get my skin torn on the zippers or any buttons. Now, if I'm going to have students fighting on him, I probably will not have anything harmful like zippers or buttons because I don't want my students getting cut up. And I don't, you know, need any uh, biohazard on my clothes or on Bob. However, if I'm training a group of cops or military personnel and they're doing some combatives on Bob, well, of course, they will probably have gloves on, tactical gloves. And zippers, buttons, they don't matter. The good thing for your own training is any kind of small hazards like this prepare you for the real thing mentally. Let's go to the next step. Uh, which most schools don't even do. Now I've taken Bob off of his stand and his stand is over there. Now some people fill it with sand. I don't like that because it's too heavy to move around. I just fill it with water and the water is easy to get it from one place to another on this floor. Now Bob, he has a tube and this tube is what fits on that stand. But the problem is He's got uh, no legs. So, how do I give the illusion of legs? Well, I get a pair of worn out blue jeans and I will cut a hole in the middle. 
and I will slip it on and buckle it or uh, do the buttons and zipper because this is going to make it more realistic. Not that I'm going to have legs to do a, a knee strike or something like that, but in my peripheral vision as I'm fighting, I see a complete human form. And of course this is uh, just an illusion, but again it prepares the mind mentally. So let me get these pants on him. As you can see, this looks a lot better than uh, his condition when he comes out of the box brand new. At least it looks like a real person now, and of course the clothes, it conditions my mind for the real thing. Now let's talk about props, accessories, things you want to add to him. Now this is just a simple Halloween mask, and uh, by putting it on, what can I do with this? Well, this could be a guy coming in for a bank robbery. And of course, I pretend he's armed, and maybe I'm next to him as he comes in, and I've got to punch him and disarm him. But uh, this uh, $1, one euro mask that I bought at a store, this definitely can uh, add some realism to your training. Let me show you some other things. Now, whenever I go to the movies, and I go to see a 3D movie, I always save the glasses at the end. I don't toss them into the 3D recycle bin. Why? Because something like this, I could take back with me and put on Bob, my mannequin, and now just buy a generic hat, throw that on him, and uh, you have some thug you can start practicing with. Now keep in mind, I'm using bare hands for realism, and uh, I got to think about this because do I want to cut my hands in real life on somebody's glasses or am I going to pick a different target on the face or the neck? It all depends. What kind of training are you doing? Now another thing you can do with your Bob when he's all dressed up is you could always buy a Halloween prop like this. And of course in Halloween they uh, sell these severed arms, severed legs, severed heads. And uh, actually this is quite good because you could end up uh, taking the sleeve, putting it in there, and sewing it up. Have somebody sew it up or do it yourself until the hand is just sticking out. Now the good thing about these are a lot of times the uh, actual arm is nothing more than just foam. And of course the hand is plastic, so when you beat on it or you hit it with a stick or whatever, at least you're not going to do any damage. Now, you could also take a rubber knife and you can glue it inside of the hand. And that way, you have an armed suspect, uh, kind of a pun on words there, but you have an armed suspect. And uh, again, that could be your reason for using deadly force. Uh, you, obviously, you want, uh, if you have uh, two arms, you're going to want two hands. And uh, something like this is very inexpensive, especially on sale after Halloween. About 80% of my training involves weapons. Whether I'm learning how to defend against weapons, against a criminal or terrorist, or I'm using weapons. And let's think about it. In the traditional martial arts, most of the time is empty hand techniques. In fact, karate means empty hand. However, think about what you read in the newspapers or what you see on television. What are the criminals and terrorists carrying? That's right, weapons. Uh, whether it be a handgun, a knife, impact weapon, or even explosives. Now, because most criminals and most terrorists carry weapons, I need to train in weapons 80% of my time, as opposed to the traditional martial arts 20% of the time. As such, I have different props. Um, I like to buy little tools from toy stores. This looks like a real tool, but of course it's not. It is a piece of plastic, and of course, uh, maybe I'm uh, doing a scenario in a tool shop or in a garage or whatever and I pick this up and I use it. Um, if you carry a tactical pen, uh, you don't want to damage your Bob with a tactical pen. 
when you're setting up your scenario. And so I have foam cut out to about the size of a tactical pen. Um, a pan. Maybe you're simulating a scenario in your kitchen and uh, the fight's in the, in the kitchen and you reach on the stove and you hit this uh, intruder, this burglar, trying to uh, hurt you and your family in the middle of the night. And yet, this is just a piece of plastic. It's a, it's a little girl's toy. And, uh, and of course, it looks real. And for simulating a fight, again, one mind any weapon, like the United States Marine Corps says. Now, this is great. This is something I picked up in uh, England. And it looks like a smartphone, even has a nice little screen. And of course, we all carry these in our pocket, and it's with us practically 24-7. Now, can this be a good impact tool? You bet. And uh, if I have a person coming at me with a knife, or close range with a gun, or some other weapon, uh, going hand-to-hand -hand is very risky. Uh, he's using deadly force. I need to use deadly force. Now, deadly force means causing serious injury, bodily injury, or even death. That's not to say I have to use deadly force. Uh, sometimes you can use a lesser force, like reasonable force. But in this situation, in this scenario, in my mind, he's coming at me with a knife. Maybe I need to hit him hard and escape. Now, I'm going to show you now how I set up a scenario with my Bob at home or in my school. Go. 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 Like I said at the beginning of this video, if you're into self-defense, you're not just going to be whacking away on Bob like you're a boxer or some MMA uh, sports person. You need to set up realistic scenarios. In fact, this is what I do. I use a variety of scenarios just like real life. So what does this mean? It means the fight is going to be a short duration. I'm going to imagine, in this particular case, a thug coming up to me and he suddenly robs me at knife point. He, uh, he wants my cell phone. He wants my money. And maybe that crazy look in his eyes or something he says indicates I'm about to get hurt. Now in some robberies, probably 80% of the time you're just going to hand over your money and it's not worth a fight. But in this case, maybe I know he's ready to fight. Maybe he's indicating that he's about to hurt me. And so I'm going to launch into action, do a hit and run tactic. I'm not going to sit here and wrestle with someone with a knife. I've already been in a couple knife attacks as a police officer and in the military, and I just assume avoid that. However, I'm going to, in my mind, imagine that uh, mobile, that cell phone, or if you're in Germany, that handy, and I'm going to whack him in the head. Hopefully he just collapses, but I'm going to run, run for my life. So I'll, uh, I'll just do like a scenario and uh, he approaches me. Yeah, hello? Whoa, whoa, okay, dude, here, you can have everything. You want my wallet? Here. All right, so uh, he's at knife point with me. Maybe I block it. Obviously, he doesn't have arms, but I imagine that block whacked him right into the temple. Uh, he still has the knife in his hands. I escape. There's a thousand things you can think of, but the main thing is don't be doing it like sport. Create real scenarios, which means real time. And uh, Let's go on to the next thing. What about even using Bob for firearms training? Because I'm still in the military, I do a lot of tactical training. Plus, I'm an instructor for a lot of police and military units throughout the world. Now, Bob has taken on a different role. He is a full-fledged terrorist. And I put on a ski mask on him, camouflage blouse, blue jeans, and he's sporting an AK-47 rifle. 
I can do a lot of things with an air gun. I can come up to him and fire into him, perhaps a, a airport scenario, a terrorism in a train station, whatever. And as I get closer, I run red, meaning I ran out of bullets, and now I transition to my handgun. I do a lot of testing, not only for myself, but my students. And of course, the great thing of having a mannequin like that is you can fire and uh, practice even on your own. So let me run you through a typical uh, transition scenario. Okay, behind me are women in the women's survival course, and now this is how they use Bob to do a uh, neck twist to get the bad guy, the rapist, off of them. And so uh, Bob here is, he's a good tool, and uh, we put it right in the middle of their legs here, and if she's not doing it correctly, we give more resistance. <laughs> Hi, my name is Sarah Scheu and I'm a reality-based personal instructor and my school bought one of these bobs and um, why did we do it? Because it's um, very essential for training, especially in the women's survival course because women um, have to build up their, um, their confidence in fighting a real person and we can't just let them fight a real person head on at first time. When I say go, she starts the attack. Los. All right, Bob here represents you, and I'm the bad guy on top of you, smashing your face in. Now, another way I could use Bob is in court. That's right, in a courtroom, in a court of law. I could use him and have an expert, an expert what we call Vodayer, someone who can explain the technique and why I, which is you, had to use deadly force against this unarmed man who's punching me with merely his fist. Now, I teach my students in my reality-based personal protection class, Ground Survival, I teach them that this is deadly force. Why? Okay, well, let's go through it, because this is what I would do in a court of law. First of all, if this is you, well, you have a very little window of opportunity to escape or move. You can't get away from these hits. Uh, a few uh, inches or centimeters left and right is not really escaping, so you're pretty much stuck in this small window. Now, if he's hitting me, I have a lot of room to move around. I can escape these, okay? So that's one of the disadvantages of being here as the bad guy is mounted. What's another one? Well, first of all, if he hits me, let's say he strikes me good in the face, hits me good, well, because my head has room to go back, I dissipate the force. My neck dissipates the force. If I get hit, there's dissipation. Now, on the other hand, if he gets hit, well, he gets what we call two impacts. A primary impact, that's the first hit, and then when his head bounces off the ground, that's a secondary impact. So he can go nowhere, and now when he gets hit, he gets two impacts, okay? What about if he wises up and he keeps his head placed on the ground and he says, I don't want my head bouncing anymore like a basketball. Okay, when he does that, the problem is he absorbs the full force of this hit, 100% of the force. That's when people start getting broken facial bones and really messed up, and that's what could kill you. Now, if he hits me, okay, granted, he could break a jaw, loosen a tooth, break a nose, but rarely when you're standing or you're in this position, do you get facial broken bones. It just doesn't happen quite uh, happen often. But on the other hand, 
When you're here, now it's more likely. And of course, talk to any doctor or nurse, uh, getting uh, broken facial bones could be very serious and even cost you your life if uh, you get too much. Now, the police approach you. They say, why did you use deadly force? Okay, you explain to them. Little window, not much room to move around. Uh, I was trying to hit him back, but he just kept moving back. So obviously, no uh, effect whatsoever. Whereas, my head was bouncing off that cement floor like a basketball. Uh, I had fear for my life. I'm starting to black out. Uh, I think I'm going to die any moment. Officer, I had no choice. I had to get this guy off. Uh, yeah, when I was pushing him, my finger slipped into his eye and, and that got him off and uh, I hope he's okay. Officer, is he okay? I hope I didn't hurt him. You have to say this. You have to, uh, you have to explain it to the police officer. Now, the typical police officer, and I've been all over the world training different police units, if you say you use deadly force against this man who was merely smashing you with his fist, most police officers would say, oh, that's a reasonable force situation, not a deadly force situation. And guess what? You end up getting cuffed by this police officer and hauled off to jail. Now, when I explain this very scenario to police officers, the light bulb comes on and they realize, you're right, this is deadly force. Because how many times do you want your head bouncing off that wood or cement floor? Well, I don't even want it bouncing one time. Okay, granted, that first time, I may not die. Then again, I could be knocked out. Or, two months from now, I have serious brain injury or I have a tumor down the road. I don't want any hits to my head. And of course, this is one of the most dangerous situations. Unfortunately, this happens all the time. And, uh, and a lot of martial artists don't know how to explain why they panicked and why they were in such a situation where they had to use deadly force. Now that's for the smart ones. A lot of people are just going to swing back and uh, if everything's equal between you and him, well, the bad guy's going to win. Anyone on top has the advantage, okay, for all the reasons I said. Now, come time to go to court or just before court, I'm sitting down with my lawyer, I'm bringing Bob, and I'm explaining exactly why I had to use deadly force. Remember, this is you. And you're explaining what was happening. You're explaining every detail I just gave you. Your lawyer is going to say, hey, this is great, because he's not a self-defense expert, so you're educating him. Now he goes to court, he does the same demonstration, and now suddenly, the judge and jury, they see the point on why you did what you did. Now when you're doing throwing weapons and you're throwing it at uh, your bob, you don't want to destroy it. If you start throwing real rocks or bricks at it, you're going to tear up the rubber very quickly. Now Andy back here, uh, he's making some props. What he did was took a sponge and now he's painting it like a brick, adding some highlights to it to look like some used mortar, a little bit of black spray paint to make it look dirty. And uh, in our reality-based personal protection system, uh, we use these bricks all the time to simulate uh, throwing weapons. Or we put it next to uh, someone who's uh, doing some ground fighting next to them, and they start looking and finding something to pick up and hit in someone's head. Well. We're going to toss this at uh, Bob and uh, do some realistic training here. Now, uh, Gerard behind me is working on some uh, plastic tools that we got at a toy store. They're tools for kids. They're plastic, they look real, but with a little bit of paint, a little bit of scratching, it's going to look like the real deal. Not only do we use these in scenarios, but it's great to uh, use against Bob uh, when you are uh, doing some weapons training and you don't want to tear up your uh, investment. Now I've only given you a few suggestions on how you could use your bob for training in your self-defense. There's an uh, unlimited amount of things you can do. You can uh, throw things at him, uh, like simulated rocks or bottles. 
you could do uh, going for a broken bottle to the face. Now, I'm not going to use a real broken bottle and get uh, Bob all damaged, but I'll cut up a, a plastic bottle and use it. Or you could even use a, a chemical weapon against him. Uh, use your imagination, use him wisely, and uh, you'll get a lot of good practice out of him. Be a hard target.